Hello and welcome back to another episode of Making It. My name is Mirabelle and today I'm chatting with Michael Barnum. He's the second Michael that we are having on the podcast. First Michael is Michael Alvarado, who actually helped this Michael produce his song called The Nook, which we get into and we talk about kind of all the behind the scenes stuff of how that song came to be and the production and everything. So anyway, that probably just confused you a lot. I just, I said Michael a lot just now. <laughs> anyway, Michael, oh, there, there, there it is again. Michael is a multi-talented artist. He's a singer songwriter, an actor and a voice actor. And I would say that he has a lot of experience in this industry, whether that's in live streaming, live gigging, or any other facet of his creative field. So if you're curious to know what a day in the life of a musician, of an artist is, then stay tuned. I would say that to be a successful musician or, you know, just for self-development to be a better human, you have to be self-aware. And so we get into a discussion about that, about letting go and other mental skills that kind of help us stay grounded and connected to our purpose of creating. And, and so, you know, Michael's a pretty spiritual person and I didn't know that. I didn't know that before we had this chat, and I think we were kind of on the same page about a lot of things, and it was really cool to be, to land upon this topic of mindfulness, of of mental health talks and stuff with him, so it was really cool. I really enjoyed this conversation, and I hope you enjoy it too. If you do, please rate and review the podcast wherever you're listening. Leave a comment on YouTube if you're watching there. Follow the Instagram or Twitter account to keep updated about the podcast. All the links are in the description box. It's the description box. I was gonna tell you where it is, but you know where the description box is, I'm sure. Just scroll down and you'll find you'll find all the links to myself, to the podcast, to Michael Barnum. And yeah, I hope you enjoy the episode. Hi, Michael. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. Welcome to Making It. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm really excited. I feel like I know you. Like, this is the same with every person that I met through Twitch. Like, I already know you, but we've never spoken this way before. I know. I feel like every, like, any connections I have on Twitch with people outside of Twitch, it always feels like, like, if we're meeting for the first time, it just feels like, seeing an old friend. So I do feel yeah. like in some sense, I know you as well. So, yeah. That's, yeah. That's nice. How's it going, friend? <laughs> <laughs> going good. <laughs> um, oh, sorry. I just, I saw your, your dog pal there. <gasps> I forgot his name. Oh my gosh. Are we, it's Bao, B-A-O, oh, like yeah. a Bao bun. Because mm, yes. Asian, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's cute. Wait, what is, does yours so, have a name? Edgar. Wow. Yeah. Okay, Edgar. We should do like a little... <laughs> Like a hi. Oh. <laughs> this should be the thumbnail. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, cute. Okay. okay. Bow says hi to Edgar. Edgar says hello to Bow. Is that a, a dog too? I think he's no. a schnauzer. A schnauzer. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Right. Yeah. This is a husky. For he sure. kind of. I don't know. People thought he was a bear or like a, a seal or something. It's like a hybrid, like a bear, a seal, and a dog. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So Bao I, is very it. clearly a husky. <laughs> yes, he's kind of like the guard dog here, and he just kind of watches the stream, watches mm -hmm. the chat. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the Barnimals. You can't have yes. a real dog, huh? <laughs> Until or then, you don't yes. have one. This yeah, is the closest thing I have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> why why Twitch? We could start there. Oh my gosh, hard hitting questions. Okay, um, <laughs> why Twitch? Why did you uh, start streaming on there? Yeah, well, I think what's funny is if 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 you were there, if anybody was listening, uh, like watched my first few streams, I wasn't even streaming music, Mirabelle. I was streaming. Oh, really? I played like games with like some of my friends. I think it was a like, Jackbox was my first um, stream. Uh, but prior to Twitch, I was on an app called Periscope, which was owned by Twitter at the time. And that's kind of my first introduction to live streaming on the phone and such. And when that died, like the app was no more. I was like, well, what do I do now? Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know what to do. And then I heard about Twitch 
you know, every now and then. And back then it was like 99.9% gaming and arguably it still kind of is. And I found it and I saw there was like a small uh, community of, of musicians on there. And I was like, well, let me try this. And I gave it a shot. And now here we are. It's kind of crazy because I wasn't even expecting it to go anywhere. I was just like, well, let me just try this thing because I don't know what else to do. <laughs> <laughs> and I needed some way to, to ex- not only express what I was going through musically, but like to tap into new audiences. Because mm. as we all know, it, it is kind of tiresome. And honestly, sometimes like pulling teeth, trying to get people to move from platform to platform. People are so dedicated to one right. thing. It, yeah. So uh, yeah. that's kind of how I landed. It was unexpected, um, <laughs> but so rewarding uh, to, to, to experience. R.I.P. Periscope. <laughs> yes, R.I.P. Periscope. <laughs> that was like, Periscope is only on mobile, right? That was what it was? Yeah, I think it was. Uh, and then I think later on down the line, they had integrations with like OBS and you can uh, okay. stream on other um, like outside clients and such. Were, did you, were you on Periscope? No, I just no, watched. But you knew of it? A couple, yeah. I knew okay. of it. I wasn't very engaged with it though. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of just, I fell into it. And yeah, it really is, I ha- as much as I can, you know, say things about it, it, it really is the catalyst that led me to Twitch. Because without that experience of being in front of the camera and sort of building an audience um, little by little, I would not have gotten the, the, the courage to do something like Twitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, look so. at this setup you've got going on. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, like, go watch like the old streams. And I was literally camped out in my folks' living room <laughs> to the point where like nobody could watch television there because like my setup was just mm-hmm. there. And so now here we are in this in this booth. It, we've definitely come a long way. I'm so grateful. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's pretty dope. I'm, That's awesome. I'm excited. <laughs> what were some kind of like differences between Periscope and Twitch? Were you doing music on Periscope? I was, uh, I was kind of a mix. It was like, I, I do what I already, um, do on Twitch with, which is like playing requests and such, but there was more, um, I would, I would take them on gigs and such. So it was like more on the go. I kind of treated it like it was like a live vlog, if you will. Uh, so I think that that was, was a great angle on that platform because it felt like I could just tap in to um, that audience as quickly as I could and kind of show them what's happening. Like if something amazing happened or like I experienced something cool at a gig, I can hit that live button right away, which I can do on Twitch, but it just felt more off the fly and off the cuff, uh, with Mm -hmm. Periscope. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Hmm. Yeah. Then like with Twitch, you do a lot of live gigs. (laughs) Um, so uh, like, yeah, I do, but I don't stream them a lot on Twitch because, uh, I don't know, my phone's kind of weird. Every time I'm at gigs, it doesn't work properly and I don't get a chance to, to stream it. Very rare, but yeah, I, 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 when I'm not live streaming, I'm, I'm live gigging and sometimes it's, it, it's cool to, to kind of wrangle up the community and show them what I'm doing to see, you know, what it's like outside of this booth, which is really yeah. fun. There's nothing like being on, you know, on a, on a stage in front of real people. <laughs> you know, seeing their reactions in real time. Um, mm. Yeah, which I'm sure you're familiar with because uh, you also perform. So I'm, I'm a big advocate for live music. I love it. And I'm so grateful that it's back and that these opportunities are coming back and we can not only watch artists, but also grace the stage ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. When you're doing live gigs versus Twitch streaming, do you ever get kind of tired of either one because it seems like you're doing pretty similar things? Uh, sometimes. Uh, I think. I think there are, there are more days where I do get tired of of streaming than playing live gigs because there's a different energy that happens, right? Like I had mentioned, there's nothing like being in front of that crowd. But I feel like with streaming, as you probably know, it it's like. 20 times like it requires so much of your energy because you're not only juggling what's in the queue you're looking at alerts you're looking at dono alerts you're looking at the chat and on stage it's just like you playing guitar or whatever what have you in front of the crowd and you're playing the song you look to the next song or whatever and you go but it just feels like this (laughs) to the extreme when you when live streaming so i Mm. i would say that sometimes it it can get daunting and sometimes i have to like pull away and step away from it for a bit. And that's the biggest thing that I've learned is not to run into burnout because I think in my early days of streaming, I wanted to stream like all the time. 
And mm-hmm. I wanted to do so much. And I would go for like six, seven, even sometimes eight hours and bless my mods. Cause some of them at the beginning were like, you know, I got to go to sleep, Michael. It's been <laughs> six hours. And I'm like, okay. And I would be so exhausted the next morning, but then mm-hmm. I want to do it again. Cause it's such an adrenaline rush. Yeah. But just pacing myself. I think that's the, the takeaway here. Yeah. I, cause I think I, I mean, I said this in my last um, recording, but um like I just went on some trips and so I was gone from Twitch for like what turned out to be three weeks and my gosh yeah and like that was pretty that was a much needed break though like I didn't realize until stepping away from it all that I needed that Mm -hmm. but like taking breaks I feel like I feel like there's this kind of pressure to kind of constantly stream because you got to keep up your numbers and what not right yes um which it's a hard balance because you know you got to take breaks for yourself and the chat our communities are so wholesome they're so nice and they're like yeah take the time you need we'll be here when you come back and they really were there when i came back but like (laughs) it's and you still notice the numbers though and it's it's such a hard thing to kind of ignore (laughs) definitely and it's uh, honestly, I, I, I get addicted to it. I get like addicted to the, the high that I get from performing from, you know, getting that mm-hmm. like awesome feedback immediately. And I do have withdrawals. Sometimes when I miss like a week of stream, it feels like, I mean, you, I mean, three weeks away from stream feels like probably an eternity, right? <laughs> and when you come back, it's sort of like, oh, I have to start all over again. It mm-hmm. almost feels like that, even though the community is like, we're here for you and such, but it does feel like you have to kind of like keep up. So it's just like constant, like game of like trying to catch up with everything that's happening. Um, so I totally empathize with that. Uh, <laughs> but I, I just certainly hope that you're not running into burnout. I'm so glad that you're taking the time for yourself. I remember seeing your Instagram story. I was like, wait, where are you? Oh, yes, that's amazing. <laughs> Enjoy that vacation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you're doing so much and you're honestly, you're killing the game. And it's just been so cool to watch your journey unfold. And I know- oh, thanks. We probably just met like a couple months ago, not even a full year of knowing each other, like formally. Yeah. And you are immensely talented. And I think that what you're doing here um, uh, with your community and also with this podcast, just trying to open the scope and the conversation with other musicians and such is so important because communities need to see like what's happening behind the scenes. You get to get that insight of, of what's, what's going on what it means to be like a musician in this day and age. And I I just thank you for opening up the conversation and just giving me the opportunity to express that today. Thank you so much for all that. (laughs) I've been connecting with so many people through Twitch. It's been super exciting. We both, Michael Alvarado is somebody that, I mean, I've been following him for us, the duo for so long and suddenly Twitch came along and then we all got connected we got connected probably through there also. I, I don't think actually so. know. <laughs> like, <laughs> there are so many different like a, communities that exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It'd be interesting to see if you could trace where. I th- I want to say I'm pretty sure there's a good chance it came from from the Michael Alvarado yeah. stream. Yeah. What was your like? D- how did you find out that he was on Twitch? Because I have an interesting to, story. He came to my stream first. Oh, did he? Before he started, before he kind of like announced it publicly that he was on Twitch. Okay. Yeah. Is that That's what happened similar, to you? Yeah, similar <laughs> to happened. I remember, I think he showed up in my stream or somebody else's. He was definitely in there and he was like, hi, I'm just, my name's Michael. I'm just <laughs> wanting to check out the streams. And I'm like, there ain't no way in heck that Michael Alvarado is in my stream right now. Right. And um, what ended up happening was, I and at, at the time he didn't really like, Michael, if you're listening, looked at his profile and it wasn't like quite like finessed yet and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I don't know. Somebody could just easily take his logo and put it on there. Right. And I remember speaking to one of somebody in my community. I was like, do you think it's him? Do you, like, <laughs> I was like, I was speculating because, you know, it's the yeah. Internet. You never know. And people exactly. like to pose as the people. Uh, and so uh, that person in the community DM'd the us to do account <laughs> and was like, hey, we think we're not sure, but maybe somebody might be impersonating Michael Alvarado on Twitch. And I think it might have been Carissa that responded to the DM. I was like, no, that's really him. He's trying to like <laughs> learn about the community, which is why I love him so much. I think that's so great before you're going to step into something new like that. 
Mm -hmm. Get acquainted with the community. Yeah. Um, Put your name out there, but not in a sense where you're like, hi, come follow me, come watch my stream. But like getting to know the community you are wanting to be a part of and building those connections organically. Um, Yeah. And so that's that's such a cool way that he did it. And I highly respect him um, for for doing that. And and so cool. Because once he started his like Twitch journey, um, you know, the, the, those communities were already like interested in wanting to see what he was about because we exactly. saw him in other communities wanting to genuinely learn about other, other communities, other musicians, other, other streamers. So yeah, that kind of networking is really important. That's smart network. <laughs> yeah. 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 He came into my chat and I was like, Michael Alvarado? Like from us, the duo, but I was in the middle of singing a song, I think. And then he oh didn't say, he didn't say yes. He just sent like some See, he was kind of ominous, right? <laughs> I was like, wait, does that mean yes? Like you didn't yeah. say yes. You can't blame us for thinking that you're not real. Cause you know, it was very like one word responses. I'm like, mm, I don't know. Yeah. Just to me, it sounded good, too good to be true. Uh, and, uh, but, but what's funny is you were talking about how like, uh, you, we're watching us a duo and, and such. And Michael Alvarado, like his, his like music was actually the inspiration that like we kind of, I use as a framework for my first EP. Like I was oh, definitely amazing. heavily inspired by him. So to, to, to finally meet the person that you've been inspired by for so long is such a cool first, full circle moment. Yeah. And also yeah. just the fact that he produced your <gasps> newest song. Yeah, that. <laughs> Like gonna, gonna what? That. <laughs> yeah, that definitely. I had uh, quite the uh, like what? Yeah. No, that's insane. Um, yeah, it's How'd crazy. That come about. So after I kind of like made my way into his community and kind of got to know him and like kind of built a connection. Infiltrated with his him. <laughs> infiltrated. <laughs> after I just infiltrated the um, the 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 community there just for me i i i knew that he had like watching him like stream of um like producing live right on his stream i was like i really like his insight and like his instincts with music and such let me just drop this line and be like i'm writing this something i'm not asking you to produce i put that in the email i think i just i just or on discord i was like if i could just have like an extra you know pair of ears to listen that would be great and then it took him like a day or two to get back to me and then it just kind of went from there and we like had we sat through like a meeting and he like really listened to the song and then he was just like i want to produce this i was like what no no you don't that's crazy no that's crazy you no (laughs) i was so like in like i couldn't believe it it's crazy and i I, i'm so grateful it's it's my fastest growing song that i've ever ever released and uh it's just amazing to see how it's the life it's taken Mm -hmm. the song by the way is called the nook (laughs) yes check it out the nook yeah Yeah. it's it's beautiful and it was like a year ago around this time mirror belt that that i pitched that to him oh sweet i think i have oh i there might have been like a one year anniversary of like when we had that meeting i should have i should post something (laughs) yeah Cause I do, have, do it now. <laughs> I took, I know right now I took a screenshot of, of, of our, our first meet that like first initial meeting where he was listening to the song. He was like, he's like this, like so intently listening to it. <laughs> I might post it. I um, love it. Yeah. If you're listening to this, it's probably up. So go check it on the Instagram somewhere. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. yeah. Nancy wanted to ask what inspired the nook and do you have an IRL nook or can you describe your ideal nook? Oh, that's a great question. Thank you for the question, Nancy. Uh, so this song I wrote, um, like during the thick of the pandemic where I felt like there wasn't really an outlet for me to express. And so when I can't like put into words what I'm trying to say, I'll put it into a song. And at the time I was, uh, I was kind of wanting to get out even though like we had to be stuck at home, like I wanted to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. And one of the places that I wanted to go uh, was Oregon, Portland specifically. And I was looking at Airbnbs and I saw this specific Airbnb that looked so dope. It was nice and like a little quaint, small home and had like a bright blue door 
And one of the pictures had like this ladder that went up to like this like little roof or whatever. And I just call it the nook because I'm like, oh, that's cozy. That's cute. <laughs> and so I just kind of, that image stuck with me for, for so long. And I was inspired by that photo and just started uh, playing around with chords and, and, and such. And it really is, uh, that song is, is um, mostly inspired not only by that, that photo, but this idea of going somewhere, like on a trip, uh, to, with somebody, right? And you're just kind of hoping that it all just kind of clicks and works out, you know? And, and that's why, like, my favorite line in the song is, you are worth the risk, because I'm learning. Uh, as in the last few years that like, um, if you have feelings for someone, if you want to tell someone you love them, you should do it now and, and not just hold that to yourself because it's, it is, it is worth the risk. It's worth the risk to express that because I hate, I say this with such gumption, but I hate like living with, with the what ifs, right? Like, Mm -hmm. I don't want to be 80 and be like, what if I, what if I actually told them how I felt? What if I actually told them like how much I appreciated their, their, uh, their presence and what they do for me. Um, you know, like what would, what would happen then? So mm. it's such a, a very personal song to me, um, because it is about somebody that's special in my life. And I'm just like really flattered by all the responses that I've been getting from the song. Like people have been really resonating with it. And I think why it, it, is kind of uh, speaking so much truth is because it is my truth. That is like, I always tr- like to challenge myself to, to delve in deeper mm. into the process. And that is me. Like my blood, sweat, and tears is in that song. And I think it's a raw uh, look at, you know, um, hope in whatever it is, love, relationship, or something that is um that could be worthwhile you know mm-hmm. yeah so it is really beautiful and it is thank in you. my playlist that i listen to oh that's whenever. sweet <laughs> thank you thank you yeah i appreciate that it's awesome uh, here's can i give you a little tidbit though mm-hmm. so the little riff that i uh i don't think i've mentioned this so you're getting a making it hey. um <laughs> uh the uh, exclusive here so a little riff the I don't know, can't sing it, but <laughs> the, the first few chords are actually, it's, it's a progression that I've been sitting with for years. Oh, like yeah. it's always been in the back of my mind. And every time I come to the guitar and I'll play, I'm like, that just sounds so cool. But I just never found mm. a place for it, for a song. I'm like, I've tried it with other words. And I'm like, that nah, doesn't work. And then I was like, oh, wait. Let me try that with this. And it just kind of like, oh yeah, you know, you just knew. Mm-hmm. And I think it, for me anyway, I think it complements the words and the story um, yeah. so beautifully. And that's the thing that we, that Michael and I really wanted to, to tackle was we wanted the story to be the most prevalent thing and that my voice carried it from the beginning to the end. Mm-hmm. Um, we wanted to take people on this beautiful, cozy journey, if you will. It is very so, cozy. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Yes. It's kind of funny that if like, if nobody know, I mean, if what we just talked about of how mm-hmm. Michael Alvarado helped produce this and mm-hmm. you just saying, yeah, Michael and I, <laughs> it's like you're talking about yourself in third person. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I have to say Michael Alvarado because we have similar names, right? We have the exact same name. What do you mean similar? Yeah. Um, it even still, it's just sounds so weird to even still say like, My- Cool. Like calling yeah. somebody else your name. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. That thing with the guitar riff. Um, mm-hmm. That's interesting because I mean that's happened to me before too. So my song "Know You," the bridge mm-hmm. to that song, or the actually the guitar bit for the entire thing, was a completely separate like composition kind of thing that I made oh, before, cool. and then. I came up with the song and I was just kind of playing chords for the song, but the whole song now in its final form is like, it's very finger picky. Yeah. That finger picky bit was a completely separate project and, but they somehow 
fit together meld together really right yeah yeah that's yeah. so cool <laughs> i love when that isn't happens. that like it just feels like you find the missing piece right when that happens and it's funny because yeah. you're not even looking for it yeah it just like <laughs> it just sort of happens and I, that's what's so beautiful about music yeah, yeah um yeah that is so cool i did not know that that's mm-hmm. that's awesome so mm-hmm. i think the lesson for those of you out there who are writing music don't feel like you have to have all the puzzles out right away because sometimes you could be writing something else and it could be the thing that you could transplant into the, into that other project and it might, it might work. So don't be afraid to try. Mm-hmm. I feel yeah. like when I'm writing and a song comes together, it's like, wow, like, like you're putting a puzzle together and like the pieces yes. are coming together. And yes. It's like, whoa, <laughs> it's pretty magical. Do you believe exciting. in the, the, yeah, absolutely. It's so exciting. Do you believe in the 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 thought or the mantra that that the song will tell you what it needs like it'll just dictate itself yes yeah yeah 100 <laughs> percent. that is something that i've been learning as a songwriter for years now uh because i think even in my head i'm like oh, i don't know if that's that's it or whatnot and i always try to like look for the perfect line the perfect mm-hmm. chord or whatever and when really all you need to do is just continue to tell the story and the song will kind of unfold and you'll get these like mini impulses where you know that that's not the direction it should go and you know it feels true. And but when it does, you know, it's mm-hmm. like, you know, it's like those oddly satisfying videos where like something fits right into the <laughs> container. Yes. It's like, oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 I think that knowing that kind of truth is pretty freeing in a way because then mm-hmm. you don't have to feel so frustrated when you hit a block in your writing mm-hmm. knowing that like it'll come you just kind of have to i don't know maneuver your way around it trust the process yeah yes like yeah. it'll happen just give it a sec <laughs> yeah sometimes do you do the thing where you like you write and then you're like oh this is great and then you let it sit for like overnight you come back to it in the morning and you see if you still like it can't say i have actually okay yeah, that's that's kind of what I do sometimes. If I'm not if I'm not sure about a line or whatever, I'll kind of step away from it. I'll come back the next morning and I'll listen to. It. I'm like, oh yeah, no, that's not <laughs> that ain't it. <laughs> I think I think I don't let myself have that period of time, and I'm just like immediately like, eh, maybe not. <laughs> oh wow, okay. But well, that's interesting. Like it should be. I think I should give it some more time and then maybe try it again. Yeah. Cuz I mean well, most of the time it's if it's a song that I do like I mean I don't cuz writing songs sometimes takes like I don't know it could take 20 minutes or it could take a week or something right and or months even yeah Yeah it really depends but for those that take a really long time like I don't they seem to all pan out fine like I've I don't think I've ever had one where I've like come back and decided overnight or mm-hmm. however long I'm like, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I think it's interesting just to watch everybody's, you know, the process. It's different for everybody, right? Mm-hmm. So I think it's an important thing to know is like, there's no wrong or right way to, to write a song. You could do it however you'd like. Yeah. I think the thing that I'm always trying to tackle, and hopefully this is the same for you, is just like getting closer to that truth. I think that's one of the best lessons that I've learned in, in songwriting is just write the truth, write your truth, you know? So, what do you mean by that? Oh gosh, dang! Now I have to elaborate on it, huh? <laughs> um, you know, for me, I I say that all of this you could take with a grain of salt. But for me, writing the truth and speaking your truth, to me, the the definition of that for me is is making sure that it's authentic. It's a story that you want to tell. That's really what's what's on your heart, and that it comes from a place of that. And for me, I like to, uh, whenever I sing or create art, it essentially has to cost me something. Because there was a point where I didn't want to release this song. Because I'm like, this is so personal. Like, I don't want to do that. (laughs) Even though that's the thing that we crave as musicians, we want to write songs for people to relate to and resonate with and come back and be like, oh my God, that's a great song, Mirabelle. That made me cry. (laughs) But then there's... There's that that weird moment that happens where like, I don't know if I want to let it go, you know? You're giving a part of yourself to people. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. Uh, So that's, what is it called? The paradox of it is like, yes, look at me. Look at all of the pieces of me and see me in my Ross format, but then also don't. 
because it's very personal <laughs> and it's a lot. Uh, uh-huh. And so, yeah, so I think it, I think when you're song, when you're writing songs or just making art in general, it has to cost you something. It has to come from a place of authenticity. So that's what I mean about sharing the truth is, is having it come from an authentic place and that's genuine and that is, that is truly in the essence of who you are. And mm-hmm. I feel like this release, like the, the Nook is a piece of me that is, that is centered in that truth. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why people resonate with it. And Definitely. I, I, yeah, and I think that's why audiences and people continue to lean in and listen. And if you compare that to any other artist, when you hear somebody's truth, like when they're singing and you're like, why does this feel like so resonant? It's because they're like literally their soul. Mm-hmm. And those for me are artists that I like love listening to. I love a singer singer. <laughs> yeah. What are your thoughts on the songs that are trending nowadays? Like Ooh. TikTok songs and such. I knew you were going to say TikTok. Um, <laughs> I think it's, it's definitely up for debate. I, uh, listen, at the end of the day, music is subjective, right? Like anybody can like mm-hmm. it or hate it or whatever the how their opinions there's some great music out there don't get me wrong uh mm-hmm. it's probably not necessarily the music that i would like lean towards to um but that's like nothing against those artists I think they're they're incredible in their own right and mm-hmm. the things that they're making uh and it's just we're also living in a different day and age where um you kind of have to if you're in the thick of the business like you have to kind of make those songs but the, that are a bop that, you know, that gets people yeah. moving, want to do like dance challenges and such. Uh, like, and that's if, great. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Well, I think if your goal of being a musician is to just basically be very popular and have that virality, mm-hmm. then I guess that is kind of the way that things are now. Like that's what you have to do. Yeah. And the, uh, as much as that, that's cool. I, personally don't think that will lead to longevity i think Mm -hmm. you you'll run into burnout and you'll get really you get really overwhelmed because you're like oh you'll release one song and like okay that took off and there's trends happening everywhere because of that song and the next one is like oh that didn't resonate as much maybe i didn't i didn't do enough or whatever uh and so i i've i've kind of separated myself from that mentality and i just Whatever I write, whatever I create, whatever art I want to release into the world, I just want it to come from a genuine place. Mm-hmm. And that alone is enough for me to keep yes. keep going. It's a slow climb for sure. Um, but, but yeah, I'm, I'm definitely here for the ride. Yeah. How uh, long have you been releasing, writing and releasing music? Oh, my gosh. I think I released my first EP in like 2015, 2016. I was a baby. <laughs> The first EP. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So since then, um, and then it wasn't until like July of 2017, that summer that I quit my job to pursue music full time because I was working, I was working in an office um, for, for an arts organization as like a marketing associate and, and I would answer calls and sell tickets, the box office of our company and such. And Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, this is not my life. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I feel that. I feel like though sometimes it's nice to kind of have a it would be ideal if you could just have a stable income oh, while being yes. able to like make Ugh. music and do all that stuff, right? Mhm. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't really work out that way. <laughs> no, it doesn't. And so I think you really just need to tap into those things like the reason why you got into music and that for me alone that like that's the fuel it's not easy Mm -hmm. (laughs) this stuff is not easy and i'm sure you know (laughs) on top of streaming on top of writing on top of releasing it's a lot of work it's a lot of work and i think it takes a lot of discipline and uh i know for me i i've i've learned some hard-hitting lessons for sure but but i think the biggest one is like having patience Mm -hmm. and being kind to yourself and like trusting the process and and knowing that you are good enough, you know? Mm-hmm. And you talk about this earlier about like looking at the numbers and such. It's so hard not to look at those numbers, but like. That's like the comparison. only thing that shows you <laughs> the analytics. That's. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
But I think within that, it's also a paradox because you're like, don't look at the numbers. They don't mean anything. But then you're like, no, they do. Because you need to figure out and measure who's listening, where they're from. So it's, it's, it's definitely a lot for yeah. sure. So I totally empathize with you. How do you, how do you deal with that? How do you? I'm not have sure you I always do. Been, <laughs> <laughs> have you always been looking at the numbers? I try not to. Um, I mean, I've found that in the last year or so, because like I just started streaming on Twitch lot two, I, I mean it's almost two years now but let's go I feel like the growth from starting to where i am now or to where i was like a month ago like a couple months ago or whatever mm -hmm. like that year i feel like there's been a lot of growth and so you see the numbers go up and a lot and like that's really exciting and so mm -hmm. i feel like at this moment it hasn't it's just been like a positive feedback kind of thing for me so far mm -hmm. except for when i came back from my twitch break and i saw my number of subs just like it just plummeted <laughs> and i was like yeah. oh yeah well yeah um did you did you get discouraged by that if you mind me asking maybe slightly okay slightly yeah i yeah. was kind of i was obviously a little bit sad about that <laughs> yeah i, mean, I was like it'll come just... back i'm sure it'll yes. like come back up it but ebbs and it'll flows take... for sure sometime <laughs> yeah 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 there's like moments of peaks right where you're like oh my gosh there's so much happening so much activity and we're getting a lot of like new subs to the channel and then you're like oh now we're back <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's it's this constant roller coaster and it i'm is. i'm learning that consistency is key mm. um yep. and numbers are important and it's great but it's not the end all be all true it's not the end all be all um I'd yeah. much rather, I've, I've said this many times to, to uh, people, not only music friends, but just people in general, like I would much rather have like a thousand followers that are dedicated to what we do, mm -hmm. uh, what I do in music and, and, and want to like genuinely be in the streams and support in any way they can come to the shows, buy the tickets, buy the merch, whatever, than like a million who don't, you know? Yes. Yeah. So. For sure. Yeah. So I think the numbers are great. And it's just what bums me about that is like brands and like big honchos mm. will be like, do you That's have 527,000? Like. Yeah. Sorry. But I'm yeah. like, though I may not have like the numbers of like those big people, go look, go come to a stream, see how engaged they are, you know? Mm -hmm. So if there was like a better way to measure that or just show that um, right. or word that in such a way, I think, I think, um, that would be better. And I, I, I see some brands, I've, I've seen some stuff on TikTok where there's like smaller brands that are looking for micro influencers. And I'm, I'm sort of like learning about that term. And I'm like, oh, I consider myself that. I feel like I fit into that category. And I see that those brands are actually like, we're not looking for the big numbers. We're looking for people who are maybe don't have all the big numbers, but they hmm. do have some sort of following and some engagement. That's um, interesting. Yeah. I haven't heard about that before. There you go. A new word, <laughs> micro influencer. <laughs> Yeah. It makes you sound like <laughs> just like a tiny, <laughs> like tiny person. It's like though. a little speck. <laughs> yeah. We are. Mirabelle, we are. We're this small in the scope of the universe. That's a good we point. Are, yeah, it's true. <laughs> we are. Yeah. Have you ever seen that like one viral video where it just keeps kind of zooming out from the earth yeah. and you just see like how further and further away and you're like, not yeah. even <laughs> nothing. And We're it nothing. just kind of, for me, that puts into perspective. I'm like, I'm seeing like, yeah, our problems aren't that big. <laughs> yeah. You know? Letting go is a huge thing that I've been trying to kind of focus on lately. Letting go Ooh. of all, like, just even the small things that you get frustrated by, the little yeah. stresses. Like, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't actually matter. And you'll be so much happier without worrying. Mm. The constant worry or the constant, like, the anxiety-inducing things. Yeah. I resonate with that so much. Yeah. Is there, I hate to, I, I mean, I don't hate, but I'm like, I'm interested, like, you don't have to give me the full story, but like, what's, what was something that maybe happened or whatnot that kind of gave you the perspective to like embrace letting go? Nothing major, really. Honestly, I was just reading this book that was, okay. you know, <laughs> yeah. um, so because I'm talking to Kate McGill next week, 
And she's nice. like a huge proponent of this book called The Untethered Soul. So I decided I should probably pick it up and give it a That's shot. That's a cool title. I love that. Yeah, check yeah. it out. It's also by uh, Michael. <laughs> Michael you know Singer. What? Michael Singer, I think, is his name. <laughs> Wait, like literally like a singer singer? That's amazing. Yeah, let me, let me I got to just... meet this Michael. Yeah, Listen, Michael we need a Asinger. Michael Club. We need, we need a Michael Club. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, no, that's cool. I letting go is is so it's hard. It's hard. It's not an easy task. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think one of the things that I'm been working on for myself this year is my mental health, like mm-hmm. prioritizing me. And I had to and I'm still in the process of letting things go. I'm, I'm realizing that in, in, in where I am in my life, I'm still kind of holding on to who I was before. Hmm. And I think crossing over the ripe age of 30, uh, I now, I, I, I'm like, I feel like I'm in this transitional stage where I'm like, I'm no longer who I was like three, four years ago. And there's a part of me that still wants to be that person, right? Mm-hmm. So in a sense, I feel like I am grieving the old me, but making way for the new me, Mm. if that makes sense. Yeah. So I guess my biggest challenge has been letting go of who I was. So it's, it's really hard to step away from what, what you knew because we're creatures of habit, right? And so we, we stick to what we're used to Mm. when the magic happens outside of our comfort zone. So I yeah. resonate with that. And I, I immediately grabbed my heart or just my hand on my heart <laughs> when you were talking about letting go. Cause that is, that is literally where my head space is right now, mentally, all of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's interesting when you start becoming aware of kind of you, who you are and all that. Self-awareness. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it's kind of hard though for a lot of people to kind of grasp, grasp that understanding of 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 yourself of self mm-hmm. and trying to you know these mindsets are like we're not taught these things in school nobody tells us about nope. our any of this stuff nope. growing up so like books like the untethered soul or other books that talk about your mind the self mm-hmm. and all that mm-hmm. i feel like turns people off just because it's not something that we're used to. We don't know and, it, right? Yeah. yeah. And so it sounds pretty crazy. I mean, it, the, they like talk about being aware of being aware. <laughs> like, being how aware, does that make aware. any sense? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. And like meditation practices and stuff like that is not something people are used to. But I think it would be super helpful if people did get more accustomed to this kind of thing. Yes. And I think also, if I may add another layer to this, growing up in an Asian household where, I, for me, I'm speaking from my own experience, talking about mental health or expressing how I felt mm. openly in a conversation wasn't something that was yep. um, warranted or, or, or granted. I mean, I could have done it, but it wasn't encouraged by either of my folks. And I think that's a, a an ongoing problem with a lot of you know, Asian American households and such is that because we didn't have that space to, to Mm -hmm. express what we're going through mentally. We're now dealing with those traumas, you know, 20, 10 years later. And because we never had the opportunity to do it then, you know, uh, and it's been such a challenge and I'm realizing that I still have a lot of things I haven't quite addressed and I'm dealing with it now. Mm. And I'm so proud of myself because I'm like, at least now I'm recognizing it. I've been acknowledging yeah. it because before, I don't know, geez, I have no idea how I've been functioning. I just probably just <laughs> didn't even give myself the permission to feel. Mm. That, is, that is the root of all of it is, is giving my perself, myself the permission to sit in these feelings and such. Right. And um, not to get too personal, but like there was a moment where I had a conversation with my mom and there was like an issue that happened in the family. And I just started to weep. I started to cry. And my mom goes, don't cry. And I'm like, mom, you can't tell me not to cry. (laughs) Like, this is legitimately what is happening. And I Mm -hmm. can't, and you know, there's like that mentality of like, be strong. You're a man, you don't, whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, But she was telling me like, don't cry, don't cry. I'm like, 
that's what I'm feeling. I have to cry. I have yeah. to sit here and feel what I'm feeling. And I told her that, and I might've said it with a lot of like a little bit of anger because there's so much pent up energy. There's so much pent up emotions that I've been holding. And I, I think it's so important to give yourself the permission to express that. And so when I told her that it kind of clicked, I saw it click in her face that, mm. okay, yeah, you should. I'm going to give you that permission to sit here with what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. And, uh, because of that, I was able to kind of get through that moment and it gave me the, the, the courage I needed to get to the next step because I was able to release whatever it was in that moment. So feel, you got to feel it to heal it, people. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Don't cry. It just has been the response that people would give forever since forever. <sighs> so yeah. Yeah. So totally understand that. I totally get that, like, why she said that, but it's nice that that was, that's cool that you told her that and that yeah. she understood right then and there. Yeah. It's very interesting. It was definitely a pivotal moment. Um, and it yeah. happened like at the tail end of 2020 where everything mm. was just, that hit the fan. And I'm like, oh my God. At that point I was like, what else is going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was really, you know, the year of like really difficult conversations and it kind of trickled into 2021. Mm -hmm. And I'm still dealing with that here in this year, but I, I'm much more self-aware and hyper-aware of everything that's happening than ever before. And I'm, for that, mm -hmm. I'm proud of myself. I'm grateful. Yeah. Go you. Yeah. <laughs> go us. Go, Let's go. you know, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm proud of you for just even <laughs> opening up this conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Something that you mentioned on your stream, you were saying that you started to kind of tell the universe to show me what's good. Right. Ooh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? What that means? <laughs> sure. Um, I think if I'm not mistaken, I probably was scrolling through TikTok, and every now and then you get that 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 TikTok <laughs> that lands on your for you page is just like, oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, that you really said for you, uh, and it resonated with me because, um, uh, what was the quote? <laughs> Say, show show me, me what's good. Show me what's good. Um, show me how it gets better. I think what it was, it's so, something along the lines of that. But the TikTok was just like, adopt this mantra for a week and just keep telling the universe and saying like, show me how it gets better. Show me how it gets better. Um, and I, I've slowly adopted that into my own routine and it has opened up my life in so many different ways because uh, I'm less thinking about how I'm, my actions are affecting certain situations and just kind of allowing myself to be there and trusting in what the universe has to offer. Like I'm having more peace with like, okay, I'm right where I'm supposed to be. It might mm -hmm. not feel like where it, it, like it does, it feels uncomfortable. Uh, but it is, I know that it's, it's, this is the path I need to be on and I am, I'm, I'm in the right place and things are working out for me. It's going to get better. And it already has. I just got to keep riding that wave. Mm. So, uh, yeah, at some point you kind of have to surrender to what is and just um, allow yourself to sit in the moment mm -hmm. and be here and be present. Um, because if we're too constantly thinking about the past, that leads, in, that leads to anxiety. If we're thinking about the future, then we're not really present. So I've been yeah. just trying to be more mindful uh, mm -hmm. as, of, as of late. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. What do you do to, to kind of keep yourself in check? So I've been trying to, before I start my flute practicing, I kind of just sit for 10 minutes and do a little mindfulness meditation sometimes mm -hmm. so that everything is just, I'm more, I'm more grounded and yes. I don't have to worry about all these outside problems, little things that like my brain is just going off about. Yeah. Yeah. It's, just, it's been really nice. Um, do you do like breathing exercises or something? There's a couple where it's like basically you breathe in for longer than you breathe out or you breathe out for longer than you breathe in. So like you breathe Ooh. in, breathe out and hold and then you kind of uh -huh. repeat that sort of thing. There are a couple yeah. different ones that kind of keeps me grounded sometimes if I'm really anxious about something or whatever. A deep breath yeah. will save you. Oh, for sure. So much. Yeah. It's amazing the things that can happen within just a breath. It can just, 
whenever I'm faced with like a difficult situation, I, that is kind of my like retreat. I go into like, a, I, like I, I go to the breathing and it really just settles me in and grounds me because mm-hmm. I think the immediate response would be like, oh my God, I'm freaking out. Like your brain wants to go insane. You're like, how do I need to run away? This is too much. But then giving yourself that, that grace to just, okay, everything's gonna be fine. Just take a deep breath. And mm-hmm. it really is a saving grace for me. I, I think breath is everything. It's not only the foundation of a singer, um, somebody who plays an instrument like the flute, mm-hmm. but it really is a grounding mechanism for the human experience. Yeah. 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 It's, it's pretty cool that I guess me starting learning these instruments have, has led to that. Like it's so much more than just playing an instrument. It, there's mm. so much more to it. So going back in time a little bit, how did you get started in music? Um, oh, interesting. I, well, I've been singing since I was four, actually. Um, so uh, I got the music genes from my mom because she was studying voice and piano at the time. She didn't major in music, but she took music classes, like she voice and piano. Mm-hmm. So I definitely like acquired her like mu- music appreciation skills and such. Uh, but I think from a very young age, I've always wanted to do something with music, but I think the whole scope of it all, um, really is just being on stage and performing and entertaining. Like that is my, that's my home. I just love it. (laughs) So whether or not that's through music or acting or whatever it is, I just love entertaining people. Yeah. Um, which is funny because I'm totally introverted. (laughs) Really? Um, Yeah, I am. But I think uh, through streaming and like doing more things like this, I'm I'm probably what is it? Ambivert? Is it where like you get the both introverted, extroverted, or something like that? So I, because there isn't an element of extrovertedness when you're on stream. Because if I was introverted, I'd be like, hey, oh my god, hello. Um, (laughs) So I have this song, and you know, so uh, that definitely uh, comes in comes into play for sure. Yeah. Who knew? I. Definitely would have just taken you. Sure in your Apple Music Library. You can ask me to play a radio station or ask for your music on a different app. Amazing. Um, you can also check my music on Apple Music, apparently. Um, <laughs> so you can. <laughs> what the heck? Okay. Sidebar. My Siri. Whenever I say the word Ed Sheeran, my Siri will go off or something. It's the weirdest thing. <laughs> that like the when I don't even say Siri, it doesn't go off, but other words will trigger. I don't understand. Oh. Um, I yeah, whenever I, I'm Android, but on stream, it just always goes off <laughs> when like, I'm oh, talking. Oh, yeah, Mirabelle's streaming. Let's, let's, let's do something. Yeah. Uh, what were we talking about? <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, how I started. Yeah. Yes. So I, I think I just, at the very young age, I, I kind of just knew that I wanted to perform. Um, and the stage for me is my, my home and I love it. It's, mm. it's my space where I really feel unstoppable and where I can truly like be my 100% self. That's so. cool. So you've yeah. never had like performance anxiety? Have you? Oh, are you kidding me? Uh, no, of course I did. Yeah, I, I still get nervous before streams. I still get nervous playing gigs. Uh, I don't think I had anxiety to the point where I'm like, I kind of psyched myself out and didn't mm-hmm. perform. I always like go through with it no matter what. Obviously with more experience, you get more used to it. And I get it. There's people out there who are like just terrified of the stage and, and, and I don't want to like write away anyone's fear. Like you are mm-hmm. warranted to feel whatever you, whatever you're going through. But for me, there's always a moment where like a threshold that I hit and then I, that I just kind of take the leap and, and, and go do a mm-hmm. leapa as they say. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I had to throw that in there. It's trendy. Hello. Uh. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I definitely had my, my fair share of moments where I, I get scared. I still get nervous mm-hmm. before performing. Sometimes for but like for charity streams or big streams where I know it's like a lot of people are going to be coming in or front page, I still get nervous. Mm. It's still scary, but it's the moment where you like you settle in, you're like, "Oh, okay. Everything's fine. I'm not going to yeah. blow up or anything. Nothing, nothing crazy is going to happen." And that just what again, grounding me in that moment is like the breath, but also like having that 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 pure amount of joy that I get from performing mm-hmm. it's a, like a like a high that I can't even describe 
it's the best. Yeah. What happens after streams? Oh my god, I get How hungry. <laughs> yeah. I'm like all the dwarves. Um. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Sleepy. All that stuff. Uh. I have to decompress. Like, if if a stream ends at like eleven o'clock, or which rarely ever happens, you know, chat. Uh, <laughs> I have to. I need like about an hour to do an hour and a half to like calm down because it's such a high. Mm-hmm. It's such a high. And once you're done with the stream, the adrenaline starts to wear off a little bit. And I usually crawl into bed right away. I don't even have time to like oh, yeah. wash my face. Usually if it's too late <laughs> and I'll just sit there, dim the lights and just like, like, um, just zone out for a bit. Uh, but I get, yeah, I, I definitely get hungry. <laughs> there've been times where all I want to do is like eat a burger and fries. And I think I've done it a time where I'm like, I'm going to go order some food, mm-hmm. yeah. but yeah, it's, um, it's a lot of energy, right? You would know as a streamer. Mm-hmm. They, they, yeah. That's why when people talk about like, oh, streaming, that's not a job. You're, you're not doing much. I'm like, are you kidding me? There's so much. Imagine to do. being an entire factory where you have to manage every single entity that happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is. It's work. It's labor. It's a, it's a lot. It's so it's fun. fun. Yeah. It is fun. It is fun. Yeah. I just, I, after streams, I kind of just sit there and like stare at a wall for an hour <laughs> do you really <laughs> like i don't really do much after a stream i like go into raids and then say hello and then sometimes sometimes i stick around sometimes i can't really and i just nine times out of ten i have to dip out because yeah. it's such a long stream and i think mm-hmm. that after stream care is so important drinking water staying hydrated make yeah. sure you eat um yes, sure and and rest super important how did you I don't know if I ever knew this, but what, how did you get introduced to Twitch? What was your, how did you end up here? So, uh, Kate McGill. <laughs> oh, perfect. I did a cover of a song of her band, Meadowlark. Is her band. Mm-hmm. Um, so I did a cover of their song, Fly, and then she saw it. I was in her stream, and she was like, oh yeah, this is, it's an amazing cover, and you should start streaming on Twitch. I was oh, wow. like, nope, nope. <laughs> Never. Thank you. See, <laughs> running away from things yep. that's not familiar. Yep. Yep. I mean, I had to like, I like considered it before because just seeing people that I follow do all this stuff, I'm like, well, I kind of want to do all this stuff too, but that's terrifying and nobody's going to follow me. And like, I don't have, I don't have a following. So who's going to come? syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, her community is super awesome and very nice. And they all came to my first stream. And the rest is history. Yeah. That's so sweet. It just takes one person, right? That little push. Yeah. Um, yeah. For me, I have to, and I'm going to shout her out, but Madriana or Adriana TX3, <laughs> she actually kind of held my hand through the Twitch thing because she was like one of my first few years. She's like, this is how you do raid. This is mm. how you mod someone. And I'm like overwhelmed because coming from yeah. like Periscope where you just hit the button and just go live. Hello. Hi. What's up? To like managing all this stuff i was overwhelmed to the roof i was like i don't know if i could do this mm. and y'all do this like two three times a week You're crazy what <laughs> look at you now <laughs> i know and, and still to this day i'm like to a degree i sometimes don't know what i'm doing <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot because it's 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 um it's a thing that's continuously evolving right there's like mm. new elements yeah. that get added and different things you have to deal with, like uh, point redemptions and such. And is, then, is that why stream elements is called stream elements? I don't know. Oh my gosh, boom. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Maybe. There Watch are so many not. elements to stream. <laughs> we should have like a periodic table of stream <laughs> elements. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, it's for LBS. <laughs> A is for alerts. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. M is for moderators. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> alpha, or an alphabet of elements or something like that. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, there's, uh, yeah, I, I owe a lot to her and she's, she's um, kind of been in, 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 in my corner for so long and I'm grateful because if it weren't for people like her who continuously like pushed me and challenged me to keep streaming and mm-hmm. to continue to build a community, even though there were days where I'm like, we, only, are, we had a max viewership of five, like, you know? <laughs> I was, yeah. I got discouraged by that and I got like tied by the numbers and granted mm-hmm. we're no longer in the five anymore, but there, you know, some days where you're like, ugh, we didn't get that much stuff. And that's where it gets, you know, frustrating mm-hmm. because you want to 
reach out and 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 tap into new audiences and such. But truth of the matter is that growth is very can be slow, mm-hmm. um, and it's not. We can't all just have it, you know, right at the start. You have yeah. to start somewhere. Yeah, uh, and it takes it takes time. And I'm proud to say that we've been building this channel and this stream and this community for this would be the fourth year oh, wow. this year. Yeah. So we Congrats. started in July. Thank you. So we're going to have a stream anniversary in like July or August. And uh, yeah, I'm so grateful because I would never, never would I have imagined that it would amount to something like this. It's mm-hmm. insane. I've not only built communities and such, but I have like friends, like online friends <laughs> that I've yeah. actually met in real life. And we text and we talk and we hang out and we cry together. And it's like (laughs) in a time where, you know, we badly need that connection. And I remember when the pandemic hit, I was so grateful for things like discord and Twitch because Mm -hmm. I had a outlet to connect with somebody like a, have a human connection. And although there were people that were struggling because they didn't physically have people with them, I was, I was like, yo come hang out on the discord or such because like mm-hmm. we just we uh, we just hung out so many times we'd stay up to like three four in the morning to, like deep talks and such and it just <laughs> we've done that it too. Was so, <laughs> yeah it was just so nice and yeah. in in a weird way i was grateful for this r- weird downtime because it made me realize how important connection was mm-hmm. um and how badly we so need it yeah uh yeah and granted, it's not like that as much anymore because people have, you know, we've, we've sort of gone back to normal a little bit. But, you know, whenever mm-hmm. we have those times where we can connect with people, uh, like I, I, I do not take it for granted. I'm so grateful for connections like that. And like this, like getting, connect with, getting to connect with people um, and, and learning about their stories. Yeah, it's super yeah. cool. And there was a question from my uh, Q&A episode. It basically had to do with viewership and what I, how I view that, um, my mm-hmm. perspective on it, I guess. And I was saying how, like, I would be happy with five viewers. I would be happy with the amount of viewership that I had back then mm-hmm. and the amount of people I have now. And if I have more people who come in, that'd be awesome too. Mm-hmm. But I think I'm only able to say that in the position where I am now because I've been able to connect with so many people in the chat. Yes. Yeah. I mean, when we start, first started, Everything is a little bit awkward and like don't really know people yet. You don't really know how Twitch works either. <laughs> um yeah. but yeah, now like people are just we started doing these questions of the day and sometimes they get really deep and vulnerable and some people are willing to share and I feel like I know these people. I I've never I've seen some of their faces. I've seen some of them in a yeah. video chat on discord but like yeah you know i i feel like i know the chat which is is super cool and if somebody doesn't show up i feel their absence yes <laughs> yeah it's it's crazy it's so cool uh, i think that's so wholesome that um you know you i mean you've literally built a community right and um when somebody's not there and you know their energy their spirit it's lost and you're like oh we miss you and such yeah um, and I think that when you strip away the music or whatever category you stream in, what it comes down to is connection. Because Twitch would not be, frankly, any platform would not be what it is if it weren't for the people, people mm-hmm. who show up and such. And that's the takeaway for me for Twitch is not so much um, the whole platform itself. That's great. But like me being able to cultivate relationships and connections with people that I would otherwise can't in different ways. Like I would never... Yeah thought that I could meet people all over the world, you know, let alone on the internet and have deep talks with them and, and such. And I think Mirabelle, it's so cool when people are willing to share parts of their lives with you within your chat yeah. is a reflection and a testament to you as a streamer mm-hmm. and the safe space that you have created for them. Mm-hmm. So, um, I don't know, not to say that you ever feel guilty or feel like, Oh, don't, don't feel like you have to share stuff. And I mean, if people are willing to do that, it's because they feel so comfortable um, mm-hmm. in the space and, and, and community that you've created. And I, I, I get the same thing in my chat as well. And yeah. sometimes people are like very vocal and just kind of spill out their day. And to a degree, yeah. there's a moment where like oversharing can be, you mm-hmm. know, too much and such. But I'm like, 
it makes my, my, I, I get so like emotional about it because I'm like, wow, thank you for sharing that. Thank you for, thank you for being a, a part of this community and, and trusting us with whatever you're going through. And okay. I have a thing on my discord called real talk where it is an open discussion where anybody can just like dispel whatever they're going through. And there's always somebody out there that's been like to respond and like help them and such. Yeah. And I, I think the community within itself has, has helped, um, everybody uh, that might be going through something. And, and hopefully anyone that has come to the community looking for that connection or a place to, to, to express what they're feeling and need somebody to empathize what they're going through, hopefully they don't feel as alone anymore. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it's so awesome. beautiful. Yeah. My Discord, we have, our channel is called Struggle Bus Support. <laughs> I like that. When's the next stop? <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> I yeah. like that. Yeah. Super cool. Yeah. And like when something happens to somebody in the community too, like I, I am such an empathetic person. Oh yeah. That Like I just, I feel it all so much and yeah, I don't know. The community is so, we're all so interconnected now and it's, mm-hmm. it's interesting. It's, do you feel, and uh, like, I, again, I, I, I relate to that, that statement. I'm definitely an empathic person, um, probably more than I should. Cause sometimes I absorb too much. And like, if you were to like, tell me something sad right now, I would be like, Oh my God, my heart. And I would end the call and still yeah. hold whatever you're going through. And, uh, although that is such a beautiful thing to do, it can get unhealthy because mm-hmm. you're, you're, you're not only dealing with your own stuff, but if you carry on other people's traumas and such, it can be very, it can lead down a very tricky um, path. So I, for my, my intention for you is just like, I hope you're just giving yourself that time to, to, to kind of separate your own things with other people. And Mm -hmm. the thing that I'm realizing, big hard hitting lesson for me is like, I'm not responsible for other people's traumas. I'm not responsible to heal other people. I can only guide them and I can help them. But um, at the end of the day, I cannot be the one to like heal someone. They have to be willing to do that themselves. And the same thing could be said about ourselves. Um, Mm. We're not responsible for the traumas that were given to us, but we are responsible to heal. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. It's like that statement freaks me out because it's it's a huge statement, but it's so true. And you're like, ugh. I know. (laughs) <laughs> like but it's I say, hard. Them like yeah, with all the, it's like I say it with such ease, but it is not easy. It yeah. is not easy. Putting up those boundaries is it's hard. It's hard to separate yourself sometimes. But again, like letting go is so important. Oh, that's letting go. Yeah, yeah. definitely. That's it, I think that's. It, I just keep looking at that picture, and it's just so beautiful to see communities unfolding like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah. I think what, what you're doing with your community is, is, is great because you're building those connections and it, you know, from, from the outside looking in it, it, it all looks genuine and it feels like it comes from a, um, an authentic place. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a great foundation to have for any relationship. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right. So we have some Patreon questions. Let's do it. Daniel asks, how are you so confident? My God, how am I so confident? <laughs> these, let me just make clear. These are questions that are asked like specifically to me. Yes. Oh my gosh. Well, yeah. hello, Daniel. Mm-hmm. Okay, Daniel. How am I so confident? <laughs> First of all, I'm flattered. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think confidence comes from within. It, it comes from experience. Uh, I definitely, here's the thing. I, I, I don't think I can necessarily own that I'm like, confident because there's some days where I'm just quite frankly not there but I can definitely uh channel that 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 energy and that that courage within because it's always it's already in you you have to understand that that confidence it's already there you just have to give yourself the permission to go there uh but to answer your question overall I think it comes from experience and I think it comes from uh understanding who you are and the energy you want to put out into the world. Look, I've gotten to a place where I'm speaking of letting go. Like I've, I'm working on letting go of having other people's opinions of me carry so much weight. 
mm-hmm. because at the end of the day, like people aren't really necessarily thinking about art, like you, they're thinking about themselves. So I'm like, why do I hold so much weight on somebody's, like giving somebody so much power on their opinion when they don't even know who I am? Like they literally just started jumping into the streamer, like seeing what I am doing and here they are criticizing what it is. And I, I'll like internalize. I'm like, what's wrong with me? But I'm like, nope, that's their opinion. And uh, I know who I am. And I like, I like, I know that that, um, like, I, I shouldn't have to carry so much weight, you mm-hmm. know, of what, what they're saying. So confidence comes from experience and it comes from uh, realizing the power that you already have within yourself. So let it out. Be confident. And if you, if it's not quite there, kind of fake it a little bit. Just like kind of pretend, play this character of like the person that is not to be cocky, but just like have this, like this, 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 um, energy about you that, that, that feels free, you know, mm-hmm. go to, go to your happy place. Where's that one place where you feel like you're unstoppable channel that. Mm. I think that's where you'll find confidence. Um, yeah. But that's, that's really flattering to hear. <laughs> How are you so confident? I'm like, huh, you should see me on my days where I'm not. <laughs> and sometimes I'll show up to stream and I feel like I have to push a little bit to, to, to be that. Um, uh, but yeah, it's, it's not every day. Mm. I'll tell you that. I think we've kind of talked about this in my streams before in my Discord, I guess, about confidence and how, I guess, if we're not so used to it, it mm-hmm. we might think that we're coming off cocky or arrogant yeah yes yeah. which like yeah. we never want to do and so we then get even further away from feeling confident mhm i think there's there is a difference confidence and then just cockiness right mm-hmm. yeah 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 daniel also asked favorite short for michael mitchy <laughs> wait what like what's your favorite shorthand for michael like a short nickname. Oh, shorthand. I don't know why I thought of shorts. I'm like, I'm like how does he know I'm wearing <laughs> shorts? <laughs> that was a two-parter question. Oh. <laughs> I am wearing shorts. <laughs> and I, if you see me uh, throughout the whole thing trying to like adjust, because we have this in my <laughs> chat where they're like, show legs, show legs. I'm like, I'm trying not to. It's not that kind of stream, y'all. Um, exclamation point leg. Uh, <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> It's the favorite short. Oh, short head of Michael. Yeah. Like and he a said, nickname? I guess so. He, he also typed Mitchie or Mikey. Oh, yeah. God. Uh, <laughs> uh, if it's not Michael, it's Mike. Mm. But no one really calls me Mike on Twitch. Um, or, oh, no, actually, I lied. Jane Rio. <laughs> mm-hmm. We have this ongoing thing where, because every time I would go in her chat or I rage, she's like, Mike, Mike. Mike, oh my God, Mike. And so I I recorded myself saying Mike. So every time she raids me or comes in my chat, I have a button that says, Mike, Mike, Mike. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and she adopted that for herself and I love it. She can call me whatever she wants. I love Jane. That's uh, amazing. Yeah, so, Jane is yeah. awesome. Yes, I love her. She's so talented. Um, nickname is Mike, uh, but I prefer Michael. Mm-hmm. Um, they're the Spanish version of, of Michael the Miguel, but I don't think that is something I would be okay with. So don't call me that. <laughs> Michael's fine. Michael's fine. Mm. Uh, there are people that I like, um, that I know IRL, even from Twitch, the community, and they'll call me Mike and that's fine. But yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I understand because my name can, my, my handle, it can be a little confusing because like, what's your name? Barnum. Barn? Is your name Barn? <laughs> is it Barn new? Is it Barn? Right. Just call me Michael. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. Fong asks, what do you want people to think of slash associate when you are being mentioned? Oh my God. Where do they get these questions from? Oprah? Like They these, have great questions. These are Fong so... Also, okay. Fong is the one who makes all the question of the days now for <gasps> my Okay, well, no wonder it's so articulate. So, wow. That almost feels like what sort of footprint do you want to leave on the world? That's the impression yes. that I get from it. Oh yeah. my gosh. Fong. Okay. Um, I guess when people mention me, I want people to have a sense of uh, authenticity, genuineness. Those are the words that come to mind, but also a sense of play. Like, I think that's what's cool about what we do here on Stream with Music that we're literally not just playing instruments, but we're playing. We're like 
kind of giving that inner child within us a chance to come out, right? We're so ditzy. Like we do a lot of crazy things on stream, the things we do for subs, whatever. When, it's when so Elmo much fun. Comes out. It, absolutely. Right. <laughs> like, and this is like, this wouldn't like be it in any other nine to five job, you know, not usually anyway, but um, yeah, I just hope that people, um, when my name is mentioned that they, they see that somebody that <laughs> this sounds so weird. It sounds almost like not like a little ego. Cause like, Oh, I like to think that I'm kind, mm -hmm. genuine and authentic and such, but no, really. Um, I think those elements do come into, um, into focus is that, um, they see that there's somebody who is, um, is genuine and kind and loyal, like a dog. And listen, I feel <laughs> this is going off the rails. Um, I know I have golden retriever energy for sure. Oh my gosh. I, you, oh, wow. You totally do. <laughs> see? Told you. Somebody told me that. I'm like, you know what? I like it. I'll take it. Um, and that's I've, I've actually one of the dogs. I've never thought about it before, but yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's me. I would want a golden retriever or like a lab. I think those are great dog breeds. Uh, <laughs> but yes, what did we learn? Yes, that genuine um, authenticity and uh, a bit of play, like, you know, that, that inner child that mm. is not afraid to, to have fun. Yeah, that definitely okay. comes off in your streams, I think. Oh, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> like transferring from watching you stream to this call, like, it, it's pretty seamless. Like, you just what? are how you seem on stream, which is great. Oh. <laughs> Mirabelle, that's so, that's really sweet. Yeah. And I know that came from a genuine place because that yeah. made me uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> but in the best way, that's great. Uh, because I, I never want to put the impression that I'm putting on a face or whatnot. Mm. Um, because yeah. Yeah, like I'm, I'm so tired of like having to put on, you know, like a fake mask and like be yourself. That's literally... The, the 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 thing to do in life is just be yourself because everyone else is taken. <laughs> I think it's funny because we learn that as a, like you know in, in in kindergarten like oh be yourself be kind to one another, um, but it's funny how those two simplest things could also mean like it could be the hardest thing to do. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to be myself? Exactly. Uh, yeah, it definitely takes practice. Like, listen, I'm not like 100 percent there all the time, but I know I'm a lot closer to that than ever before hmm. so great i hope i answered the question i don't know if i did but i think so <laughs> thank there you are, fong has a couple more questions <laughs> oh my gosh okay Lay they're all me. they're great questions um, i love it <laughs> like every time the podcast gets to the patreon questions section i'm like everything that i asked was like meh it's, it's fine <laughs> They're like normal. Eh. They should just drive the interview. They should just have all the I questions. Know. Yeah, I'll just be like, I'll just, I'll just be the host. I don't have to do anything else. I'll just talk. Less work for you. Yeah. So was there a career setback you faced, which you later realized was an advantage? Oh my gosh. A career setback. Uh, well, the immediate thing that comes to mind is, is, like leaving my jobs. I don't know if that's considered a setback. Uh, but when I auditioned for American Idol, that felt oh, yeah. both like, yeah, that felt both like a setback and a catalyst to the new thing. When because did you I audition? Don't, Sorry. When did I or what? Yeah. Uh, well, I guess both. I don't know. Oh, so. I, I want to uh, hear this, about this audition. <laughs> oh, sure. Um, there is, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of just be 100%. It, it was an audition that never aired. Um, but I did get to audition in front of the judges, Luke Bryan, Lionel Richie, and uh, Katy Perry. But the audition never aired. And it was when Idol was doing like a reboot on ABC. So it's like the first season back mm -hmm. ever since it got taken off the other network. Uh, so I see it that as both a setback and a catalyst because, I mean, it's one thing to give, to have that opportunity, but then also to perform in front of your peers and people that you admire and then for them to be like no you don't go to hollywood oh. it is like painstaking it's horrible yeah. and then i oh gosh it's such a not traumatic i'm like i've i've i'm, I'm better about it now it, it definitely took it was a hard pill for me to swallow but just imagine like after that audition i remember walking down the line of people it was like dead quiet you see the crew and the cameras are all on you 
and the camera's on my mom waiting for her reaction because mm. my mom was in the other room and they didn't like she didn't know what happened and I had to break the news to her that I didn't make it and her face went from like yeah tell me you made it tell me you made it yeah yeah let's and then to like just disbelief she just couldn't believe that her son somebody that she you know um watch you know sing and has like so much love for music and such get the no like mm. she was so convinced that it was going to be a yes and i mean in, in to regard i was as well mm -hmm. uh so that was really hard that was that felt like a setback because i felt like oh if i can't make it on idol if i can't even like you know make it on this show or whatnot then then i'm uh, what what chance do i even have in, in music at all mm. So yeah. that was a moment where I kind of, I didn't give it up, but I was like, I don't want to make music. I don't want to write anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, I realized through that process, grieving whatever it was, there was so much in me that I needed to get out. Like there was so many stories and I'm like, okay, what I can't put into words, I'll put into songs. So I started writing music. And then I released um, another EP called Breaking Habits. And it's, um, it, it, it kind of puts you in the headspace of where I was mentally at that time, and um, I just knew that um, after releasing that, I got a lot closer to who I was as an artist because it, I, I kind of just surrendered to the moment and just allowed myself to, to write some really deep things and, and release that into the world. And mm -hmm. so if it weren't for being rejected on national television, quote unquote, by your peers, I don't think I would have, I would be where I am right now with the, the courage and the drive that I have now. So in a way, I kind of have to thank Katy Perry and, and for saying no and mm -hmm. Lionel Richie for saying that he saw how passionate I was, but it wasn't my time. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. I can't imagine, like that takes a lot of courage to just put yourself into that room yeah. and do that audition. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. If if anyone wants to read like the whole story, I kind of gave you like the, the abridged version because we would be here all day, um, which I'm happy to tell you the whole story uh, at some point. But like I wrote a whole like medium post on it. So if you just search my name, American Idol, you'll find it. Um, so, yeah. Cool. <laughs> Fong also asks, what is one thing you will never do again? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> just what one the after heck? the other. Well, the morbid thought is like, I'll never audition for that show again. <laughs> <laughs> because, and I think it's true. I don't think mm -hmm. I will. Um, or any like music competition show, television for that matter. Because at the, at the end of the day, I, like the lesson that I got from it is that as much as it is a show about like discovering new talent, it is a television show that is there to create entertainment. Mm -hmm. Right? It's drama. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's a reality show. And no no shade to like people who actually won the show and have built careers. I mean, there's amazing artists, Kelly Clarkson, Carrie Underwood, you know, mm -hmm. even Jennifer Hudson who was rejected and didn't make didn't win, but like look at her, she's so amazing. Tori Kelly, another one. Mm -hmm. Um that's just one avenue to get to whatever it is. And if the biggest thing that I want to stress to people is um, if you ever want to go out for shows like that, I don't want to be an advocate for like, don't do it. <laughs> if you're gonna do it, just know, um, to protect your artistry, protect your heart, protect your mental space as well, because those things can really get to you. And if you do not have thick skin, you will be, it'll be very hard. It'll mm -hmm. be very hard to, to, to get through. Um, and remember that these are, these are just shows and it's not, it's not the end all be all. I think there's this um, misunderstanding that you have to go on The Voice or American Idol or said show to make it or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Like I'll see amazing talent on YouTube, on Twitch, on TikTok, and people are like, go on The Voice, audition for The Voice, American Idol, like whatever it is. And I'm, and I'm like, and they're like, it, she doesn't have to. Like that's just <laughs> one way. And I'm like, keep doing you. Keep releasing music yourself and make a name for yourself that mm -hmm. way. Like I just... We need to normalize and not have that be the end all be all. It's not. It's mm -hmm. not. You can get to wherever you want to go in different avenues. That's just one way, but it's not the only way. Great point. 
There you go. <laughs> yeah, I think it's kind of like all the TikTok, following TikTok trends and all of that right now. Mm -hmm. There are all these different avenues, you're right. That was a good reminder, too, for me. Just like... Good. There's so many different paths that you can take to get to a certain place and... Absolutely. You could definitely try... You know, you could you could try everything. It doesn't yes. always have to be one thing. Yes. Yeah. And I'm a big advocate of that. Like, if you want to, like, try at least once or whatnot, just to see what it's like, whatever that is. But just know it's not, like, that one avenue is not the only one. There's, like, you know, it's like that plan A through Z sort of deal. Can't Plan A doesn't work? Okay, got B through Z. Keep going, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. I'm glad I could remind you of that because that's definitely something that I needed to to learn and sit with because mm -hmm. I was so convinced. I was like, if I can't make it on that show, then I'm like, who am I? Like, I don't deserve yeah. it. Like I got very bad in the head because it's like, oh, that was, I don't regret that, that experience at all. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it, it, it really ultimately shaped me to who I am now. So I'm actually in a way grateful for it. Mm -hmm. um, because but like it gave being me the, the, in the, the moment though, the it's hard. Yes. Oh yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Um, Does Fong have another question? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, okay. Nancy, though. I did it. Nancy. <laughs> Good <okay>. job. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Thank you. Nancy said, happy AAPI Heritage Month. <gasps> Yay. Yes. Happy yeah. AAPI. Um, what is something you're celebrating this month when it comes to your identity? <gasps> oh, my gosh. What the <laughs> heck? These <laughs> questions. I feel like because it is API, so like it's, it's tied into heritage right hmm. um what is one thing that i'm celebrating listen i'm just so like happy to be living in a day and age where we're seeing so much content and like works produced and created and starring amazing people from our community mm -hmm. like i could cry about it like i finally watched turning red last week with my so friends good. and i'm like to watch like a Disney, I think it's a Disney and Pixar film mm -hmm. where it stars an Asian um, character. Like that would have been unheard of like 10, even like five years ago. <laughs> so I'm like so happy to see where we're headed um, in like the entertainment world. Just seeing more of that representation. Uh, I think we badly need it. And it's such a testament to like how amazing our community is and how talented we are in different mediums, not just in entertainment, but going back to music, you think about um, her who just won a Grammy, mm -hmm. Olivia Rodrigo, who won a Grammy as well for her first debut album. Like what? Right. <laughs> um, so for like seeing things like that makes me feel uh, more represented and, and, and seen. And, and also frankly that I'm like, okay, if somebody who actually looks like me, can attain a goal like that, then I'm not, far, I'm not too far off, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm celebrating. I'm celebrating more representation within our community. And I'm also celebrating those within my own uh, community in the arts who are doing and making things. Like I applaud you, whether you're in a play, you're writing a play, you're writing a musical, you're writing music, you're making art, what have you. Um, Please continue to, to make and create. My gosh, the world needs it. <laughs> yeah. Great answer. <laughs> yeah. So those are all the Patreon questions. That's amazing. I guess we'll wrap it up there. But that was a great chat. I feel Thank like, you. Yeah. This was, was super fun. Awesome. I think that's so cool that you have your Patreon um, patrons uh, ask questions. That's cool. How long have you been doing the Patreon thing? I think I started last year in February okay. or so. Yeah. Nice. Oh, is it specific to supporting this podcast or just like your all your artistic and creative endeavors in general? All of me, I guess. <laughs> all of you. Okay, nice. Yeah. Yeah, so like That's I cool. post my some song snippets on there or uh yeah, like exclusive stuff I post on there before it gets out onto Spotify and stuff like that. I let them know. That's cool like collabs that I'm working on. We do you hear that? a monthly live hang. <laughs> Subscribe and be a patron on the Mirabelle Patreon. <laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah. That's, do you that's have a cool. Patreon? I <laughs> do. I look away because I am, it's not 
active. <laughs> it's one of those things. I don't hate the platform. It's, mm -hmm. it's really all on me. It's a lot to manage, obviously. So kudos to you for doing it. You've got a lot um, going on. So <laughs> I mean, yeah, to a degree. And uh, it's definitely up for a revamp. And I've, you know, just like subscribers, patrons have come and go and such. Mm -hmm. And I think there might be like one or two people that's still supporting it. And I'm not like really giving them <laughs> other content. It's, I feel guilty in that sense. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's definitely um, another beast for sure. I love the model. I think it's great. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But you definitely have to be on top of things and constantly figuring out ways to, to feed content that yeah. is exclusive to all the other stuff that, that um, already exists. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Where can, where can people find you on the internet? Yes. Uh, so Twitch, um, twitch.tv, Barna Michael with one M. Uh, you can find me also on Instagram and Twitter. You can check my YouTube. YouTube.com, Michael Barnum Music, and Spotify. Just search Michael Barnum. I think those are all the ones. And then my website, michael-barnum.com. Uh, Sweet. If you want to learn more information. But yeah. Um, my, my biggest question for you is mm -hmm. what is in the pipeline for you, if I may? Oh. <laughs> you don't have to include this, but I, I am curious. I'm like, what, yeah. what's next for Mirabelle? It's a great question. Mirabelle's trying to figure that out. <laughs> Good. Okay. <laughs> well, um, at the moment, I have, I just came out with a collab with Aiden Somerville. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It came out today. Um, I have an original I coming to it out. Yet. Ooh, okay. I, it, it's great. I'm so excited about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, original coming out in two weeks. And then I have another cover that I can put out after that as well. Gosh. Um, You've content podcast podcast yes. is happening do you hope to like make it so that you have a team to help like edit podcasts and such or do you like that you have all your hands in the bowl like you want to do it yourself i do like doing it all myself but okay. i think maybe in the future i mean at this moment one i like doing it by myself and two yeah. i feel very awkward about having somebody else yes uh, <laughs> i told yeah, yeah definitely yeah <laughs> so yeah that's um, understandable but I think in the future, like depending on all this stuff that I'm doing, if if it gets to be too much, if I'm spending too much time just editing where I could be making things or something, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then it would probably be really nice to have <laughs> somebody help. Definitely. Um, yeah. But um, aside from that, yes, writing a lot, recording. It's good. My survival job, if you will, well, it's sort of like a side hustle right now, but it's slowly becoming... Um, more of the forefront for revenue mm -hmm. is voiceover work. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. I was going to ask you about that. I didn't I mention that on the podcast. It's okay. Uh, and uh, it's actually been really rewarding and cool uh, because there was a moment in the beginning of the year where gigs weren't coming in and mm -hmm. there was like this trepidation to hire uh, musicians because people weren't like, is the world open or, you know? <laughs> right. And I freaked out. I was like, I don't know where I'm going to get my next paycheck chat. Like I got to, okay. I thought about like, oh, I got to stream like crazy. Because mm -hmm. if revenue is not coming elsewhere, we got to push this and such. And then I remembered, I'm like, oh, well, you do have that voiceover reel. Why don't you go for it? And so I did. And uh, within like two weeks, I booked my first job in it. How do you <laughs> frankly, even get into that? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Frankly, it paid more than I ever have ever earned in music in the last like four years. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I could get used to this. You mean I only have, like I'm recording like, and I remember the, 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 it was like an online ad and it was only for 30 seconds. And I made <laughs> more in, for that than, like, wow. <laughs> than music. I'm not saying that the money is where it's at, like whatever. It's, it still definitely takes some dedication, work and patience. Um, but if, uh, there's people in my community who are interested in voiceover and I'm probably thinking about like doing a seminar and talking about it more to create the conversation if people want to get into it yeah, and such. Um, that is so but, cool. But yeah. So if you ever have any questions in that area, feel free to, and if you include this in the podcast, do not hesitate to reach out Sweet. for questions on that. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. <laughs> Thank you, Mirabelle. Learned a ton a from you. 
Oh my gosh, I feel like I know you even more. Are you going to TwitchCon? No. Oh, <laughs> oh gosh. You're maybe all the way in Canada, Canada, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe if uh, you come down here soon enough, or if I'm up there, I don't know, some mm -hmm. shape or form, we get to meet up and hang because I think that'd be really cool. That'd be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, cool. Chat with you soon. Yes. Yeah.